<laughs> All right. We are live today with Derek Sarno. Derek, uh, it's so good to have you here yet again. Uh, those of you who don't know, Derek, oh. <laughs> he's a very popular man, as evidenced by the call in the middle of the live. Uh, but he's a very popular guy here on Kitch, too. He is the co-founder of Wicked Kitchen, all about developing, promoting plant-based foods. He's also the executive chef and director of plant-based innovation at Tesco, which is super cool. Derek, when I lived in London, Tesco was my go-to grocery store. So Amazing. you are you are the man. And, um, and you've done stuff before with product development and all this cool stuff at Whole Foods Market. You have authored the Wicked Healthy Cookbook with your brother, mm -hmm. Chad. Um, you, you're just the man and you are the man of mushrooms as well. <laughs> if anyone missed your Mushroom Mafia shirt uh, last stream, you are perfect for this month's Mushroom Councils. <laughs> oh, there it is, there it is. Uh, so we're so excited to have you back here today. And what are you gonna be making, Derek? Today I'm gonna show how to make a Greek-inspired souvlaki sandwich. So like, I, I used to work in a Greek restaurant when I was first starting out cooking back in the early 90s, late 80s. Um, and I worked in a Greek restaurant, so we made a lot of Savakia, Euros, all kinds of really cool, amazing Greek-inspired food. So I'm going to do a take on that, but doing with the mushrooms. So I'm going to use these brown oyster mushrooms again. One of my favorite mushrooms, and I get these from Smithy Mushrooms here in the UK. And at Tesco, we sell them here. We, I got them into the Tesco. So people ask where to buy them. I know where I can get them here in the UK. In the US, I've always found them in farmer's markets. Uh, Whole Foods sometimes has them, and I know there's other uh, stores that have them there. So it's always and could you could you could you swap out other kinds of mushrooms if if you you're not able to kind of mushroom. Yeah, yeah, you can use any kind of mushroom you want. This, you know, I I like to use these because you can press them and I can create recreate make steaks out of them. So they're really easy to do that, which I'm going to show you how to do that here. Uh, you could use my takis. It just depends what you have access to. Um, I, you can use the button mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms. It's just not the same though, you, but you can do it. It's, right. You know, uh, Texturally more than anything, maybe. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So portobellos, you can't really, you know, it's just different. They're di just different. You'll get a different experience each one. If you want the experience that I'm trying to share with you, it's these mushrooms <laughs> that you want to use. Got it. Cool. So just to get started, because I have a few different things. It's, it's more complicated than last night's if you were on here last night. So I have three different things. We're gonna make a tzatziki sauce, which is a uh, traditional yogurt cucumber sauce that's gonna go on top of it. And then also a marinade that we'll also use because this isn't animal products, and I'm a, a plant-based chef, vegan chef. You can use the marinade again. Whereas if I was marinating raw meat, you can't use that again. You, it's a no-no. So that's a bonus for cooking more plant-based. I'm heating up the pan here. I have regular, this is just regular rapeseed oil, uh, canola oil in the US. I'm just adding a little bit here, make sure it's hot. Sometimes I splash water, sometimes I add salt, and you can still hear Ooh, it. Ooh, you hear that sizzle. Yeah, you can hear it with the salt, so that works well. And I just wanna get these mushrooms on. So I try to do whatever, because I want it to flatten and compress really nicely. You just look at the mushroom. I can tell which side I'll lay down first. I'll put the bottom side down because I have three of them I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. And ha ha so have you cleaned those or how did you clean the mushrooms first? Yeah, they come, so it's funny. A lot of people ask how to clean mushrooms. There's really nothing to clean. If you need to clean anything, it's this small little stem here. There's a little bit of straw and I would just slice that off. Okay. That's the, that's the way. So because they're grown indoors and these aren't foraged, you really don't need to, you don't wash mushrooms. You, you could wipe off the dirt, but there's nothing on them. They're amazing. Okay. So one of the things I like to do is on the pan, I, I like to explain the heat from a gas stove is, goes out and around where the cool spot would be in the middle of the pan. So I try to add the stem side, which is the thickest and most dense to the edge of the pan where it's gonna get cooked the most. So That's a great tip. 
Yeah, let that sit there. And then I'll just rest. I have two cast iron pans. Big fan of cast iron. Leave them on the stove all the time. It's like I'm camping all the time. <laughs> and it's super easy to clean up with them. A little bit of an ADD when it comes to cleaning. So I'm just going to let that sit there. And while that's going, we are going to make the other thing. Right, so. so question on how, how hot did you get that pan before you, like be, when you put the oil on it, it was already pretty darn hot, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been hot. I mean, I turned it on as soon as I went live here. So it was heating okay. up really the good. Whole, that whole intro, it was, it was doing its thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. cool. So I have a few bowls here to make the sauce. I want to get the tzatziki sauce. Well, I might be mixing up things, so I'll try to stay. I cook crazy and I'm not used to doing it for an audience. <laughs> so unless I'm doing a film or filming it for it. A couple spoons. This is a vegan yogurt. So it's Oatly Greek style yogurt. I believe it's in the US as well. It's one of the better ones. There are some that I, I, I don't care for, but if you find a good plant-based yogurt, just stick with it and I use it for a lot of things. So this is really nice and thick. It'll be a nice, Great, make a great sauce. So that's about it. So I use about half of this. Yeah, saving the rest for my breakfast. <laughs> I do love oatly. That I, I actually, I'm not sure because I'm in Canada now. But when I lived in London, and there's no oatly here, you're, you're here. But there's um, no, no. there. I miss oatly from. I miss oatly from my time in London. Um, I believe they're everywhere now. They should be. I want to give a quick shout out to the folks at the chef's table. We've got uh, quite a few people watching from the chef's table. Hi hey, and welcome. And you know, if you guys have questions throughout this, feel free to press the little raise hand button there, and we'll make sure that your questions or comments are are heard. All right, Derek. So to, I've been I've been yapping. Tell me what you're doing now. All right, so I'm just taking the cucumber. It's an English cucumber, so it's not as many seeds, and you could use the middle of them, whereas like the regular cucumbers have, they're really uh, loose in the middle. So I like the English cucumbers. They usually come by themselves, by themselves wrapped in a plastic. So that's what I have here. And I just use them half of it. I'm just doing a quick dice on it. A note too for everyone watching before we went live here, Derek was sharpening his knife. And I think that like, that's pretty key. When you see him cutting so smoothly like that, he's got a, a sharp knife to do that. That's key. Well, it's always good. People are always asking what kind of knives. I use, these are Dahlstrom knives, but it's not the knife. It's how sharp it is. I don't care what, what brand it is. If it's not a sharp knife, it's not going to be good. So I swear that a, that is, it's like a chef's secret, but it's not, it shouldn't be a secret, but. <laughs> it shouldn't. It's just important to have a sharp knife. And it, 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 it just, I don't care how expensive the knife is. It, it just needs to be sharp. <laughs> so I'm just mixing the cucumber. Well, you can see that anyway, though. Into the yogurt. And then for flavor, one lemon. And because I'm not patient enough to just use my hand, I always use a strainer. That's smart, though, beyond patience, because uh, my hand my hand often <laughs> misses all the seeds. Yeah, so. exactly. Some people are really good at it. I just am not. So I like to use that. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm sure I do not get any seeds in there. Put that there. And then I add a little bit of salt, just to... A little pinch, so it's probably like a half a teaspoon. A little bit of black pepper. And I do have garlic somewhere. So I'm gonna... I noticed that you're resisting uh, much of an urge, although I think that you're going to do it now. I was going to say, you're not really checking the mushrooms. Yeah. I, I've been cooking these mushrooms enough this way that you can I can do it by sound. Ah, whoa. Because because you have the water that battles with the oil, that sizzling sound. So when that liquid comes out, it really dampens the sound of the liquid. So you can tell when it starts to fry again, the water has started to evaporate. But when you have a pan on top as well, it'll prevent it from evaporating. So I like to remove the top, let it evaporate a little bit more if I need to. 
it's kind of like just you know be one <laughs> i always say this be one with the mushroom and you'd be good just understand be one with the mushroom just that should like, be the mushroom council's like official slogan <laughs> be one with the mushroom <laughs> Garlic shit. Sorry, hold on. So, garlic. Derek, you mentioned that those mushrooms that you use that they're that they're grown indoors. I didn't realize that that so many mushrooms now are grown in these controlled environments where there's like controlled water and energy use. So it's like good for our natural resources because yeah, because they're the control, right? They are the most sustainable thing to grow because they, you don't water them. There's like sometimes there's mist in the air and that's it. But huh. they grow in, in dark. When they come out into the light is when they actually bloom or blossom. Oh. I don't know if I can say that for... But they're really uh, amazing to grow. And you can grow them in any climate because they grow indoors, which I think is fantastic. So I just have some small garlic cloves here. These aren't too big. And they're a little messy. I use a little bit more afterwards. I've got a fun mushroom fact to uh, to tangent off of your last comment, which is that producing one pound of mushrooms requires only one point eight gallons of water. Amazing! That is incredible. That is it's incredible. Good. On the Mushroom Council website, they have a little section about how the sustainability of them, and it's great. To, to look at and just read it is i mean that's how i learned they're the most sustainable thing to grow i mean like, doesn't that make you just feel better about eating it <laughs> like it's delicious and oh I, I feel good about this now i feel better about everything so this is about a teaspoon of the garlic going in there and how many cloves was that that was uh three really small cloves so it's about a teaspoon and i'm not okay. worried about the garlicky flavor because that lemon juice is going to help curb it so it won't be so strong and where did my okay i have a little bit of dill let me check these mushrooms okay great i don't know if you can see that color oh yeah we can absolutely see it nice looks, and brown yeah that looks fantastic so is, would this be considered the Maillard reaction? Also, I think, you know, we hear that term thrown around a lot with like steak and stuff. This is also the Maillard reaction, isn't it? My, I don't know. I've never heard that thing. Oh, it's some science-y cooking term that's thrown around <laughs> that I've heard before. I think that that's like what is happening. Um, what, what gives it that browned, that browned, yeah. Uh, yeah. The nice, <laughs> nice stuff. The nice crust of yeah the crust exactly so i have fresh mint from outside it's cold but i'm still growing uh her herbs outside so i got some fresh mint it's just a little bit and then i have a couple a uh, little bit of dill you can see this i don't know see how much it is it's not that much so i'll just pull off the soft bits of it yeah it looks just... like just a, a handful of sprigs really yeah, it's not too much. It'll probably equate to a good uh, teaspoon. Okay. Of both of them, minced, so half a teaspoon of each. So I'm just going to do a quick chop of the herbs, so dill and the mint. They'll add a really nice, fresh, poppy flavor into that sauce. I also have two green onions or scallions, and then just a quick dice of this. And then also going into the tzatziki just to make it as flavorful as possible. Because the yogurt's pretty pretty bland and as a foundation, it works great for a carrier for all the flavors. And also the texture, I imagine like the creaminess adds a lot to this. Yes, exactly. Always clean okay, I so, see that your workspace is so clean. Thanks. 15 years of catering right there. <laughs> Going to somebody else's house, I gotta leave it cleaner than I left it, than I saw it. Okay, so mushrooms are looking great. I'm gonna season these, still cranking. It's a little black pepper on the top, really simple seasoning, a little bit of salt. 
I'm going to use granulated garlic because we're going to put these in the oven and I don't want it to burn. So I don't tend to use fresh garlic when I'm cooking in the pan with this for long periods of time because I don't want it to burn. And I want a nice crust to form on these steaks. A little bit of more oil for the bottom because it, what happens is as soon as the water releases from the mushrooms, it starts soaking up all that other flavor. So. And I mean, I think that this this may be obvious or a lot of people watching may already know it, but the reason that mushrooms really work for this like steak souffle that you're making is because they bring that umami, right? They bring the flavor that um, is so satisfying that you that people look for in a steak souffle. Yeah, agreed. It, and the reason why I use these mushrooms is because it is the whole food solution to animal products. You don't have to mm -hmm. have animal products. And if you don't want to eat the, the plant-based alternative products, I like to use vegetables as well. I'm not against eating the other things, but I also like to use whole food veg in replace of it. So, Derek, I listened to you on a sorry. Or, yeah. Is there a next step? I don't want to be talking while you no, got okay. it. Okay. Well, I listened to you on a podcast um, and, and the, I heard that you prefer the term free from animals over vegan veganism. I do. Yeah. What can you, can, like, why? Why? Because when you're, when you're talking about food, it's just, you know, some people have a negative connotation with the word vegan. Some people have yeah. a negative connotation with the word plant-based. I mean, it's just, it's bad. on our book, it's only free from animals. We don't talk about being vegan or anything. It's just excluding animals from our food and anything else that you do. I'm just against all the suffering we cause to animals. So it's best not to use them at all. Yeah, especially when you can still make something so delicious and feel so good about like and what it's doing for the environment. I mean, I think mushrooms are a key example of that. These mushrooms are freaking fantastic right here. It smells so damn good. I don't know if you can see how good that is. Oh, there. yeah. They look amazing. And I'm actually going to shut that up so it doesn't cook anymore. So what I would do with these now is put them into this marinade. I'm going to make a quick marinade. Hold on, let me test this. This up. Always tasting as you go. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's not too. The lemon and the herbs, a little bit of salt. It's really nice. That'll be perfect. Okay, so. Oh, we've got a, oh, I want to answer this quick question. Um, uh, Kay is asking, what's the name of the plant-based yogurt he's, yogurt he's using? Oh. That was the brand Oatly. Yeah, Oatly Greek style. Okay, Oatly Greek style. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do, I got uh, this cool pepper. And the recipe calls for bell peppers, but I found these cool ones. So same, they're just a little bit sweeter. I'm just gonna start roasting that a little bit. And can you talk to me about recipe testing and like the process of writing recipes, both you know, for for your cookbook, the Wicked Healthy Cookbook, but in just in general, I think you do a, you make a lot of recipes, don't you? I do. It's the pain, bane of my existence. I hate it. <laughs> I You'd honestly, rather just cook it up. <laughs> I'd rather cook it. People ask all the time, and I probably am such a disappointment because I don't write a lot down. And how I have people on our team do it nowadays, thank God, is I'll do videos of this, and then they have to watch it and write down, and then I'll just go through and make sure it's right. So it's that hard is, to. That's great. <laughs> unless, I, you know, if I was just sitting home writing books, I could do it, but I try. You know, I have to, I have to work, I feel like I work a few different jobs. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it seems like you, you really do. You're, you're kind of a jack of all trades <laughs> in right. the, in the, uh, in the food world anyway. In the food, yeah, because I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm not that great of a cook, but you know. <laughs> I think a lot of people would disagree with that <laughs> statement. <laughs> so the garlic, I'm just chopping garlic here and making sure that this is on the flame. It's nice if you have gas. If you don't have gas, you can just pop it in the oven and roast it. I just It just happens faster this way. And would you have to rotate it as you roast it in the oven like you kind of just really easily did on the stove right there? Uh, you don't have to rotate it as much, no. 
Okay. Or you can cut them into pieces and toss them with oil and throw There's so many different ways to roast peppers. Okay. And so then how is, many garlic cloves did you say? This is two good sized garlic cloves. Okay. And it's a pretty fair amount of garlic. So for the marinade, you want I want oil, the garlic, I want the citrus, the lemon. So the lemon is gonna cook the garlic. And I will use this thing again. Out here. Yeah, so a roll on the lemon. Make sure I can get them all out. Two lemons. So as the marinade, the sieve catches all the seeds because I don't like to use my hands. And it's faster this way. Oh, we've got another question here um, in the Ask the Chef. Harry's asking, why do you wipe the condensation off the second cast iron pan? Oh, because it's on the bottom of the pan and I don't want it. It's a me it's messy. <laughs> it gets messy. So yeah, I'll show you in a second here. Let me get this. So I got the lemon juice in there. I don't need that anymore. Let me turn this quick. Nice. Got some nice color. So when I rest the pan on top of here and I pull it off, I wipe it. A because I don't want it to continue to I don't want it to ever rust because I use both sides of the pan. So I'm always constantly cleaning it. And both sides get seasoned really, really well. So and seasoning is is basically using oil to. Right. And I'll do that as soon as I get this. Uh, as soon as I take these out and put it in the marinade. So I got the lemon in here, right? Now what did I do with the rest of the olive oil? Sorry, forgetting. Speaking of the here. lemons, uh, real quick, we've got another question um, from Marco asking why roll the lemons. Oh, it helps loosen it up so you can squeeze the rest of the juice out of it rather than it, it being so tight. Sometimes if they're newer lemons, they're really tight. So you know, unless if you let it sit and you get it really old, <laughs> then it loosens up on its own. But it's always good to roll it because then it loosens up all the fibers and then it comes out much easier. So there's just lemon and olive oil in here. And I got this nice pepper. That's pretty much done. I want that charring for the flavor. Now, if I take any of the skin off, it'll just be this. Because I, I like some of that skin in, on, in there because that's that char flavor. I really like that flavor. So, you know, I'll take off the bulk of it. Because otherwise it would be kind of overpowering. Yeah, and plus I don't need, you know, burnt flakes in food. It just doesn't right. <laughs> that great. So, but this will add some really nice flavor. And as I mentioned before, we are gonna, I'm gonna add this marinade on top of it as a sauce as well, because I, mean, is, I can use the same marinade. Okay. I'm you, I'm seeing the like steam come off those. Are those pretty hot to the touch? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're warm, yeah. Okay, okay. But you're not like burning your fingers when you remove the top? I'm a professional here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just kidding. I it's not that good. Could the rest of us do that? <laughs> I'm a baby, so I would easily tell you if it's hot. It is a little warm. I can feel it now. But I just like to dice this. Yeah. And just a quick dice. Some of it's raw, some is cooked. So you're going to have a little bit of different textures in here, which I really enjoy those. Roasted red peppers are really delicious. And so are raw peppers, so I find that's good. So I'm going to add this to this. Clean up. I know people give me a hard time about cleaning all the time, but it's really a good practice to do. Uh, people who people who gives you a hard time? These people <laughs> need to find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. So I have I have some fresh orga, or so. They say oregano here in England, but oregano. So I have some fresh oregano from outside in the garden. So I'm trying to grow all my herbs here, herbs. And I have quite a few, so I'm excited for the spring to have them all come up. So there's some fresh oregano here, and I have dried, so I like to use both. Yeah, so I use, I use about uh, half a teaspoon of the dried. And then if you have fresh, you can use all dried if you don't have access to fresh, but I do like to use fresh when possible. 
So a little bit of fresh and dried. Again, well, so offers... why do you use both? What what does each bring to the dish? The memory, it's just the different flavor aspects, you know, it's like the dried is mm. colder and just has it just has a different oregano y flavor, sometimes stronger, <laughs> sometimes not. So I just like those different I like the different fresh and dried kind of bounce off each other. Kind of the same with like cooked and raw. So when you're I love all those textures. The thing about, you know, people tend to think vegan food is boring or plant-based food is bland like i used to cook all kinds of animals i used to do all that stuff and i am not going to eat boring and bland food nor would i dare show you how to make boring or bland. <laughs> yeah. nice. so i'm all about flavors layering of flavors and just making it super delicious yeah so we have this there's a nice marinade so what I did, I will take this bowl here. I'm going to put these amazing mushrooms in it. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. The crispiness. I mean, I can, I can sense the crispiness just looking at them. Exactly. I mean, it's really amazing. And they're so good. Just straight like that. That's what I made last night is these and then made the steak and cheese subs, which you can use these for that. Or you could just have it on mashed potato, whatever you want. It's amazing. Ooh, multi-purpose. And just really quick with the with the green onions, you 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 put the white part and the green part in with that, didn't you? I did. I'm not gonna waste it. I just trimmed off what I wouldn't eat, but everything else I'm eating. So here's the marinade. Just make sure all the mushrooms are covered. And then for this, you can leave it in the fridge overnight. You can leave it for an hour, up to an hour, but I would, I'll end up using this tomorrow because lucky for me, knowing I was going to do this show, I already did it. Look at that true pro style. So we have that one right there. Same thing. This in the fridge for later. I'm going to wash my hands quick and I'm heating that pan up. So I'll do that for a reason. Hold on. Okay. So do you this, have anything in that? Okay. Oh, so that's the pan that had the mushrooms in it. It did. Yeah. So okay. A little bit of oil here because, because there's all that flavor. I'm not going to waste that flavor. So I'm just going to add that right to the marinade that I'll serve now. And then I'll rinse this out. You can hear that sizzling. Mm-hmm. What's the purpose of adding the oil to the marinade? Just because it picks up the flavor that was there from the mushroom? Yeah, that oh, water, it would steam and make a, uh, probably wouldn't taste as good as, it's not going into a sauce. So if I was adding it to a sauce, I might add, a, I might have added water, but because we're going to, I'm going to use this as it is, I don't want to add dirty, I don't think it would taste good. Got it. Right. But. I add water to this pan. All I had to do is rinse it out and it's clean. You just have to wipe it out. And then every single time I use it, add a little bit more oil. And I wipe this side, wipe the bottom, and it sits here. Derek, and that is like a top tip. I feel like honestly, you could do an entire live stream about just how to care for a cast iron skillet so many people do not know and like and you just make it look you just made it look so simple and because it is but it's just you incorporate it into your routine right it is exactly because they they always sit on my stove and i put them like this because i know they're hot so i won't grab them because dumb me sometimes will grab them and i know that that's hot so that's how i set it and it reminds me like oh those are hot i shouldn't touch those right now so smart yeah, so this, I'm just getting things ready. We have the sauce. I have the mushrooms here. I am going to pop these mushrooms in the oven. So this is after marinating. Now, if I, if it wasn't so cold out and I could actually take this camera, I would have go outside and throw these, pop these on a grill. I would have gotten the grill going, but I do not have mm. that. Yeah, so I'm going to add this right to this pan here. The marinade's going right on top of them. Okay, 
Yeah. And is your is so is your oven preheating right now? The oven was on. Already... So I, okay. So I'm 200 degrees Celsius on fan. So I like to always cook at the same temperature unless I'm not. <laughs> okay. And you said 230. 200 degrees Celsius, so that's like 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. Back, yep. Yeah, I'm still learning my my Celsius. I wish we all. Just... I ju I just double checked your conversion. It was spot on. <laughs> With the fan or convection, they call it fan here, but it's convection back home, back there. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I have the, these are my tomato containers. I just, I reuse containers all the time. Frankie, dog doing something. Okay, so let me clean that. This Derek, I love that, like, you know. I think it all is probably second nature to you, but while you're cooking, you're just offering so many tips in terms of, you know, sustainability, um, but also just, just good habits to have in the kitchen. And you do it second, you do it like second nature, but really, really yeah. good tips for people. I do it because I'm lazy. I do it because I'm lazy. <laughs> Awesome. We all are a little lazy, though, aren't we? <laughs> so, so I just save the container. This one has holes in it. This one doesn't. So I will add the tomato to this one. But I'll, I'm also going to, just to get ready, like mise en place, having everything ready. So when people come over or have dinner, tonight it's just me and the dog. But And I'm going to have a huge feast after this. So I got a little bit of lettuce in there. Yeah, so that'll go on the same one. Because that's too blocky. And then the tomato, tomatoes. I'm really conscious how I pronounce things in England because I get made fun of for my English, my American. <laughs> so I'm just quartering the, the tomatoes, the tomatoes. <laughs> I'm just quartering them. Nothing big. You just like say every ingredient twice, once the British I, way, once the American way. Translate it. I still do that after after living in England for four years. I come back and I say things like, "I'm going to take the lift," and I call people oh, a mate. Exactly. And I, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just super, just super conscious of of it, which is funny. All right, so those are good. Tomatoes done. I do like adding a little bit of salt to the tomatoes just to help them. The moisture come out of them a little bit. Mm. All right, so mushrooms are almost done. Popping that in there. I have everything here. Yeah? Did the sauce. You got the bread. I have a plate. We'll put it on. But first, all right, that's not hot anymore. So I'm gonna toast the bread with the stove with the oven. Yeah, so I have a few different pieces of bread. I'll make two. There's probably enough for more. But because I'm using gas, and if you don't have gas, obviously you use, uh, just pop these in the oven. But it's just is nice to warm them up. I would do this with tortillas as well, just to give them a nice little, make them a little bit warmer. Yeah. I've never, I've never used the stovetop flame for that purpose. It's hot. It's hot. You burn your fingers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, it's great, but it it's fast though right it's a, it's a little more time efficient than the oven it is it is faster yeah i mean it's it's fun when you have people over and you do it and same with the peppers you just got to keep an eye on them yeah. yeah which is also harder to do when you have company over but but it is impressive exactly. it's just especially you know tortillas if you ever making burritos or tacos it's easier to do it on this than anything else. So, and all right, Derek, I have a I have a a big picture question for you. I'm curious about because you have been such a such a um, you know person personality for plant based foods. Um, and you've really you've really done a lot to to help show why this is a great way to go. I mean, where do you see the future of that going? the future of plant-based foods going? I see it's just, I mean, <clears throat> to me, it's been, it's been on my mind for the last, you know, 10, 15 years, but it's been like, 
it's been in the back it's been on the back burner it's just coming to the surface now and i don't think it's even reached a peak which hmm. just got to figure a lot more products are going to come out a lot better quality products are going to come out and then you have the whole cellular agriculture also coming out you know where we're growing muscles animal muscle that instead of eating uh raised animals that take up too much resources and it's just not you know, my the whole reason i did it is because of uh, compassionate reasons i just don't i needed to line up my moral compass with my actions so i just don't like to kill anything i don't want that to happen you're getting get, you're getting all kinds of applause here on the chef's table and not just the <laughs> not just the virtual applause the actual human applause <laughs> I mean, I get people still have a hard time. They, they're struggling. They try to do it. It's just, you know, I know it's not always easy. But that's what we try to do is show how to. I want people to cook. I'll show people how to cook. That's free content we like to give. We have a whole YouTube channel. We have a whole Instagram. I try to give as much content as possible. And when people are lazy and don't want to cook, we have all these amazing products in store and launching in America and here. Wicked Kitchen, everyone. Keep your eyes peeled. Wicked Kitchen. <laughs> All right, so these are probably done. That looks amazing. And it's hot. So there's a lot here. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to eat it all. But I will take a big, one of these big steaks. Yeah. So that's going right there. Can you see that pretty well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looks great. Now I know it's hot, but I won't. Just slice it less like a steak. So what's great about this is you can eat the whole entire thing. I'm just gonna have one slice down the middle. Yeah. Hot. It's good. So the oil you asked about earlier. Why the oil? Mm -hmm. There's no fat in the mushrooms. And if I remember eating meat correctly, it's only been six years. There's a lot of fat in meat. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm just I'm gonna add a little bit of this lettuce here. So souvlaki to me is just pretty much Greek inspired tacos. <laughs> uh, to at least to me, you know. So I can add the steak right onto it. Amazing. I was surprised to learn on the low in sodium, mushrooms are low in sodium, um, or that they're, they're fat free. They're also low in sodium. They're cholesterol free. Um, they're low in calories. Like, I kind of didn't no realize suffering. all these nutritional benefits. And it's high, high grade protein. So it's the best kind of protein you can get. Okay, so we have this. This is pretty much it. Yeah, we're coming to an end which is looking good. So like all of the, all of the different parts that you have put together. Yeah. They're all, they're all coming together yeah. in front of our very eyes. <laughs> and then coming together yeah. and then this amazing tzatziki sauce, right? Amazing. Oh man. I feel like that tzatziki sauce, it, you know, there's so many uses for oh, that. Oh yeah. And I'll just eat it. <laughs> I'll just eat it out of the bowl. Eh? So it won't... <laughs> So this is how I would serve it, just like tacos. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. All the colors. Plate. That's beautiful plating. And I need, I need some herbs. Hold on. I need to take a photo. I have some coriander here. Uh, cilantro back on the coriander here. <laughs> also from your garden? No, I have to buy this. Oh. Sorry. I, I, it's not, yeah, I don't have this going, but I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to take a photo so I can share it later. Oops. Yeah, but that's it. Beautiful, beautiful plating. Hold on, I have a second phone. <laughs> My other phone is the second, is this camera here, so. <laughs> True content second. creator king status right there. Anybody else have any questions while you got me on here? I see there's a yeah, few people. let's you guys want to so start. um Kay is asking what kind of bread is that that you've put this the... is it's a Greek I got it at 
I got it at Tesco, so it's Greek inspired, Greek style flatbread. So you can Greek use, style flatbread. All right. You can use pita, pita bread. Works really well. Um, some nons work well. I always look for anything that doesn't have animal products in the ingredients. And sometimes they're produced in the factory, but you know, is that nice. Doug? Okay. Yep, Doug. Doug's here, and uh, and he says that Brian up, loves Doug? cilantro. So put an extra extra couple on there for Brian. Uh, I am gonna try. This. He's one of those. He's one of those people that has the taste buds that suggest cilantro. Oh, okay. Well, we can use flat leaf so <laughs> Okay, so you. there was some irony there, some sarcasm. Hmm. Oh man, go in and for that bite. You're making us all drool over here. You're making us all drool. So we got good. another question here for you. Um, Marco's asking if you grilled the mushrooms, would you keep the marinade and add it once it's grilled or add it on top as you grill them? I would baste it as you grill it, but I would also hold some back because you have these amazing peppers. And add some back to it. That pepper and garlic that's cooked, so it's really nice. Okay, nice. Um, Stephanie was saying she can't wait to make this tacos. Uh, Blocky forever. Um, Manon is asking, "Where's Frankie?" I'm sure that Frankie's like got to be around. I'm sure that smells so good. <laughs> like, right Fra Frankie's like the hero of these streams. She is. <laughs> Everyone needs a good, uh, a, a good, you know, pet. First, I was like, "Hey, a good by mascot the way, in the Derek, kitchen." You see, Derek, we ha we had a good conversation with Louie yesterday, the director of Fantastic Fungi. And oh, awesome! We're all systems go. We're all, all systems. We're all systems go for your panel discussion with him. Week of uh, Earth Day. That's awesome. That is a fantastic documentary. Um, crispy. Christy is uh, Christy's thanking you and saying how much fun this is. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we've got you've got all kinds of fans over here, and um, I'm drooling looking at that looking at that final dish. Um, and, and I'm envious that you have extras for later and that I can't, I can't just pop over and partake with you. I am going to, yeah, I'm sorry. If there's anybody, <laughs> any other questions, I'll, I'll take a couple before I go. Otherwise I'm going to go eat this and hang out with the dog. You good? Any other cues? Any other cues? I think we've got, we've got thumbs up. We've got happy, happy smiles. I think, um, I think we're all good. I think we're all going to go make this now, Derek. <laughs> thank you thank you thanks for joining you guys i'll be doing more of these i'm gonna try to set once a week pretty soon as soon as i get my my schedule in order so awesome thank you so much derek and honestly like i said at the top you're the perfect person to um be doing this with the mushroom council this month uh you make thank me you. want to eat mushrooms like i never have <laughs> so thank I you derek it. i appreciate it eat more mushrooms i'll see you guys soon <laughs> bye you. we love bye. mushrooms thanks derek Bye, guys. See ya. Bye.